Hello everyone. In this video, we will see the anatomy of stomach. So the stomach is a dilated part of the alimentary canal between the esophagus and the small intestine. As we can see in the diagram, it is a muscular sac and it is J-shaped, slightly oblique in its normal anatomical position. Its capacity is 30 ml in case of children and 1.5 to 2 liters in case of adult. Now this is the anatomical location of the stomach. It is located in the epigastric, left hypochondric and some part of the umbilical regions. The vertebral level is at the level of T10 to L3 vertebra. Now these are the parts of the stomach. First is the cardiac part. This cardiac part is lying at the lower level of the esophagus. This green colored area is showing you the cardiac part of the stomach. Then the fundus, it is the dome shaped part which projects upward and to the left of the cardiac orifice and it is full of gas. Then we have the body which is the largest part. It extends from the fundus up to the incisura angularis. This is the body. Then we have the pyloric part. The pyloric part is extending from the incisura angularis up to the pylorus and it has been divided into two parts the pyloric antrum and the pyloric canal. So these are the different parts of the stomach. So for the fundus we draw an imaginary line which is passing through the cardiac notch up to the greater curvature of the stomach. So this is the imaginary line. The area above this is your fundus. Then second imaginary line we draw from the incisor angularis up to the greater curvature of the stomach. This is an oblique line. So the body is extending from the first and the second imaginary line. So the area between the first and second imaginary line, this is the body. Then we have the pyloric antrum. This is extending from the this second imaginary line and the third imaginary line. This third imaginary line passes through the sulcus intermedius which is a sulcus which is a slight depression on the greater curvature. So this is the third imaginary line. So the area between the second and the third imaginary line is the pyloric antrum. Then the area between this, uh, this sulcus intermedius and the pylorus. This is your pyloric canal. Pyloric antrum is 7.5 centimeters long and the pyloric canal is 2.5 centimeters long. So these are the different parts of the stomach, the cardiac part, fundus, body and the pylorus. Then the surfaces of stomach. There are two surfaces in the stomach, the anterior superior surface and the posterior inferior surface. In the diagram we can see the anterior superior surface. Then the openings in the stomach, there are two openings. First is the gastroesophageal opening which is leading to the esophagus and the pyloric opening which is leading to the duodenum. Then we have two sphincters, the cardiac sphincter which is lying at the lower level of the esophagus. This is not the anatomical sphincter, this is only the physiological sphincter. It can be visualized only during its contraction. Then the pyloric sphincter, this is the anatomical sphincter lying at the lower level of the stomach. So these are the sphincters, the anatomical sphincter, the pyloric sphincter which is visualized. This is formed by the reduplication of the circular smooth muscle fibers and this is the over here lies the anatomical uh, cardiac sphincter so this is the cardiac sphincter here we can see the squamo columnar junction of the es esophagus with the gastric part this here we can again see the cardiac and the pyloric sphincters This cardiac sphincter prevents the backflow of the gastric contents into the esophagus and the pyloric sphincter controls the movement of the gastric contents into the small intestine. Now the curvatures in the stomach. There are two curvatures, the greater and the lesser curvature. The greater curvature is larger in size and gives attachment to the greater momentum and great gastrosplenic ligament and the lesser curvature is smaller in size and it gives attachment to the lesser momentum. Then we have the notch, where I have two notch, the cardiac notch, 
which is the superior angle created when the esophagus enters the stomach and then we have the angular notch or we can say the incisura angularis which is bent on the lesser curvature. Then we have the trabase space. The boundaries of the trabase space these are on the right side we have the lobe of liver that is the left lobe of the liver. On the left side we have the spleen then superiorly we have the lung and inferiorly we have the costal margin. So this area is known as trabase space. Now the contents of this area are the fundus of the stomach with gas and the costophrenic creases of the left pleura devoid of lungs. Normally on percussion this area provides resonating sound but if there is enlargement of any viscera which is surrounding it this causes the dullness in the sound on percussion. So this gives the idea about the enlargement of the organs which are located nearby to this area. Then we have the gastric triangle. As the na name indicates it is a triangular structure so there are three boundaries. So on the lateral side on the right side it is we have the inferior border of liver and on the left side we have the left costal margin and below we have the transverse colon. So this area is the gastric triangle. The importance of this triangle is it is used for gastrostomy for feeding the infant or any person which is does not uh, able to use the feed through the mouth. So we can use the gastric tube feeding through this gastric triangle. Now come to the interior of the stomach. So the musculature of the stomach it has a peculiar features that normally in the whole GIT we have the inner circular outer, outer longitudinal layer in the muscularis mucosae. But in the muscles of the stomach we have extra oblique layer. So the innermost is the oblique layer then the middle one is the circular and the outer one is the longitudinal arrangement of the muscle fibers. In this diagram we can see the innermost is the oblique fibers then circular then outermost these are the longitudinal arrangement of the smooth muscle fibers. Then we come to the rugae. Rugae these are the temporary mucosal folds which are found on the interior aspect of the stomach. So these are useful for breaking down of the food when the stomach contracts and these are temporary in nature as soon as we fill our stomach they are vanish. Then we have the longitudinal furrow which is formed between the longitudinal fold of the mucosa at the lesser curvature during swallowing. So during swallowing most of the food comes in contact with this longitudinal furrow on the in interior of the stomach along the lesser curvature. This is known as gastric canal. That is why this canal is prone to gastric ulceration because any kind of food which, are, which we are eating first comes in contact with the gastric canal. Then we have gastric pits. These are the small depressions on the mucosal surface in which there is opening of the gastric gland. So di in the diagram we can see the gastric pits. Now gastric pits these are formed by the folded mucosa especially the epithelial layer of the mucosa. The glands and the specialized cells are in the gastric gland region. So here we can see the different kinds of cells which are forming the gastric gland. So gastric gland is formed by the invagination of the epithelial layer of the mucosa inside the lamina propria and the different deeper layers. So this epithelial cells modify and they form the gastric gland. This gastric gland possesses the parietal cells which are secreting the HCL. Then the chief cells which are deeply located they are secreting the pepsinogen. Then we have the mucus neck cells which are the topmost cells they are secreting, secreting the mucus. Now come to the relations of the stomach. There are two kinds of relations peritoneal and visceral relations. So peritoneal relations here we have the layers of peritoneum which are attached to the stomach. The lesser momentum which is attached on the lesser curvature of the stomach and it is connecting your liver with the stomach. Then we have the greater momentum it is attaching the at the 
detector curvature of the stomach, then gastrophrenic ligament which is connecting the stomach with the diaphragm and gastrosplenic ligament which is connecting the stomach with the spleen. So these are the peritoneal relations. In this diagram we can see the lesser momentum and the greater momentum. Then the visceral relations. The important visceral relations are lying on the posterior aspect of the stomach and these are forming the stomach bed. So in the exam we have the direct question on the stomach bed. What are the structures which are forming the stomach bed? These are the diaphragm, the left crust of the diaphragm we can see in the diagram. Then the left suprarenal gland, this is the left kidney, then we have the spleen, then splenic artery, then the pancreas, then we have the transverse colon, then splenic flexure of the transverse colon, then, then the transverse mesocolon. So these are the structures which are forming the stomach bed. This is the stomach which is lying in the cadaveric position. Then the arterial supply of the stomach. The stomach is supplied by the three main branches of the salic trunk that is the left gastric artery, splenic artery and the common hepatic artery. The left gastric artery supplies the cardiac part of the stomach and the distal end of the esophagus. Then the splenic artery. It provides two main branches as we can see in the diagram. It is an tortuous artery and it enters into the spleen. Before entering into the spleen it provides the short gastric artery which is supplying to the fundus and the left gastroepiploic artery which is supplying the greater curvature of the stomach. Then we have common hepatic artery. This common hepatic artery also provides two main branches. First is the right gastric artery which runs along the lesser curvature of the stomach and anastomoses with the left gastric artery. Both these arteries supplies the lesser curvature of the stomach. Also this is providing the gastroduodenal artery. This gastroduodenal artery supplies to the duodenum as well as the greater curvature of the stomach through its right gastroepiploic branch. This right gastroepiploic branch as we can see these are anastomosing with the left gastroepiploic artery. So these arteries supplies the greater curvature of the stomach. So here we can see the arterial supply of the stomach. It is very important from your examination point of view. Then we have the stomach venous drainage. The veins corresponds to the arteries. So the right and the left gastric veins, these are draining into the portal vein. In the diagram we can see this is the left gastric vein, this is the right gastric vein draining into the portal vein. Then the right gastroepiploic vein draining into the superior mesenteric vein and the left gastroepiploic vein drains into the splenic vein. Then the lymphatic drainage of the stomach. The lymph from the proximal half or we can see this proximal part along the lesser curvature drains into superior gastric group of lymph nodes. Then the distal portion along the lesser curvature drains into suprapyloric group of lymph nodes. Then the lymph from the greater curvature is also we can see this proximal portion of the greater curvature drains into the pancreaticosplenic group of lymph nodes and this enteral portion drains into the subpyloric and omental nodes or group of lymph nodes. So this is the lymphatic drainage. Then we come to the innervation of the stomach. It is supplied by both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nerves. So the parasympathetic innervation is provided by the vagus nerve. There are two vagus nerve right and the left. The left vagus nerve runs on the anterior surface of the stomach and the right vagus nerve runs on the posterior surface of the stomach. These are responsible for the secretion of the gastric juices. Then the sympathetic innervation, this, these are provided by the T6 to T10 spinal nerve segments and these are vasomotor in function. They are motor to the pyloric sphincter but inhibitory for the rest part of the stomach. These are the chief pathway of pain and they inhibit the gastroesophageal secretions. Then come to the clinical aspects. First is the gastric pain. So gastric pain is very common. It is due to the infections because of virus or food poisoning or typhoid or hepatitis. Then pyloric obstruction or stenosis. This is the pyloric part of the stomach that is the pylorus. It becomes thickened and it narrows down the opening that is the pyloric canal. So the gastric contents may not pass through the pyloric part of the stomach and they remain in the gastric canal or they are thrown out through vomiting. So because of obstruction in the pyloric part, the infants are unable to engulf or digest the 
material which are given to them so they are there is vomiting after meal this is due to stenosis of the pyloric part that is the pylorus next we have the troisier sign in this there is enlargement of the left supraclavicular group of lymph nodes in case of gastric carcinoma so they are signaling the gastric carcinoma this is known as troisier's sign then the peptic ulcer it is a sore on the lining of the stomach in mo it is often found in those persons with hurry worry and they are eating spicy curry then we have the endoscopy so in this we can see there is an endoscope which is a flexible tube fitted with a camera on its anterior aspect this is inserted through the mouth then it comes to lie in the esophagus then through it it enters into the stomach this is used to visualize the interior of the stomach then we have the GERD that is gastroesophageal reflux disease and this the cardiac orifice is unable to proper its function to complete its function because of because there is uh, involvement of the cardiac sphincter that is the sphincter is not working properly that is why there is reflux of the gastric contents into the esophagus this is known as gastroesophageal reflux disease then we have hiatal hernia hiatal means opening so there is an opening in the diaphragm which is giving passage to the esophagus to enter into its stomach so if there is hernia through this opening it is termed as hiatal hernia so there are different types of hiatal hernia first is sliding type this is the most common type and it is characterized by upward herniation of the cardiac and the gastroesophageal junction so in the sliding type of hernia there is herniation of the cardiac part of the stomach and the gastroesophageal junction in fixed hernia there is herniation of the fundus part of the stomach in complicated type there is herniation of the entire stomach through the hiatus so this completes our topic the anatomy of stomach thanks for watching